This is Eternal Blade, and welcome to part three of the air condition tutorial. We've made some good progress so far, and it actually starts to look like an in wall air conditioner. So let's continue work on the panel here. So we're going to want to select. Uh, what do we want to select? All of these. And inset them a bit. Just a tiny bit. About 0 0.045. Extrude inward. And about. That's too much. 0.335, I guess. And, oops. Select just these polygons. Inset them the same amount before. And extrude them back out. Whoa. That's creepy. Let's go for a group extrude here. And try to make it match the old one. I actually wish I had the old slider back because it was much easier, but maybe I'll get used to this one. Control click the edges, deselect, deselect, and let's chamfer by two. Alright, I'm not quite sure what this is, but I can guarantee you it does indeed exist on my air conditioner. It's uh, maybe a panel that you can lift up or... Oh, to change the filter. This actually connects to this and you can pull it up, I guess. But alright. Next, let's work on this little section here. Uh, inset this. Uh, right about there is good. And we're going to want to uh, next extrude this inward a bit. Not that much because it's just a small inset or small extrude. And then let's see how well this works. Select all four inside corners. I can get this one. All right. And this one. And this one. All right. Let's chamfer them. Make the chamfer a little bit bigger, and yeah, this is going to get messy. Um, how else can we do this? Let's try it by two. Actually, that'll work. And then from here, ooh, no, can't do that. Press OK, and then from here, let's chamfer them again with the less of a chamfer. We're trying to get kind of... This thing just... How does this work? I can guarantee you something is weird because my little thing is jumping. So if one of you knows how to fix that or what it is, you know, please tell me. Um, look at that. I can't even click on it. Okay, well... Um, hmm. Will it work now for me? Look at that, it just moves. Here, I know what I'll do. I'm going to type in the number I want. So, let's put a 1 here. There we go. And click OK. Now we have a kind of a rounded. Uh, surface we can use here. Set the top and the bottom edge loop. We should select everything or almost everything. Select these bottom things, loop again. Loop. Loop. I guess we're going to have to manually select the rest of these little pieces here. And just press Q if you don't want to risk moving anything. Alright, let's select these. And all the way around. And last one. Chamfer. And actually, you know what? Let's do this by hand. Because I don't trust the other chamfer. This is even worse. Okay, back to this strange little thing. I just don't understand why it moves. Alright, let's try zero, two. With two iterations. 
check. And of course, we missed one. Oh, crap. There we go. Good to go. And we have our nice little circular area, which was a pain to get, but uh, we got it. Next, let's um, hmm, create little dials of some sort. So let's go to cylinder here, make sure auto grid's turned on. And you're just going to want to create appropriately sized dials. I'll just kind of eyeball it in at a 0.6 radius. About. And um, convert to edible poly. Move. W and let's move this to local and just push it back in. And before we do that, let's make sure it has one height segment. And then do all that over again. So select we're already on local and push it back. Now we're gonna have to link some of these things. So let's go to wireframe mode here for a second. And we're pretty up and down, so let's go to the edge and create. Let's see, these are pretty skinny, so there and there. Let's back into the normal view here. Let's extrude this, bring it down. And just kind of make a little knob port. Scale. Make sure you're on local. And bring it in. Alright. And let's see how horrible this is going to work. So select both the bottom edges here. And let's chamfer. My favorite friend. Okay. So we're trying to get this down a bit. And. Give it about 0.1 and call it 3. Alright, select the top two, chamfer, and dial that down to 2 and decrease that a bit. By the way, Control Z is undo, in case you're wondering. And there we go, we have a button which I guess works. Um, let's select this and this, and loop. Okay, or not loop, whatever. Mm, actually, never mind, we don't need to do that anyway. Okay, so let's uh, just position this using local and slide it down a bit. And bring it. Actually, that's a pretty good position for it. All right. Now we need a four dials in total. So move it there and select three. And there we go. Have our dials. They're actually a bit big, so I'm gonna scale them down the local axis. But there we go. No Make sure they're not uh, floating because they currently are. You never want floating dials. Those tend to look awkward. But hey, who knows? Maybe you have a pretty badass home and things float. So there are our dials. And we're closing in, really, on what needs to be done. And we'll see what else we can do with this. So let's get a sphere here. Bring the segments down to like 10. And on the top of these, make little spheres. Actually make bigger spheres and then decrease them to little spheres. And these are kind of like the little things that tell you if it's actually or which way it's pointing I guess. And three of those, go to the last one and realign. And just double check that they're all kind of close. Alright, nice. So we have that. Next, we're going to want to, let's see, 
how does that work? I'm trying to figure out how this looks exactly. So select your big piece here and Yeah, I guess it is these polygons. Okay, so extrude these polygons outward a little bit. And you're going to want to keep that crease there because these whole things can come off theoretically. And there we go. So we have our crease. And what else needs to be done? We have some little bolt things that we can build. So go to cylinder, bring the sides down to let's make them six and just pop them right in the middle here. And I guess these somehow hold the whole contraption together. And let's see, chamfer, one of these days I'm gonna figure out how this thing works. Oh my god. Get a little chamfer and okay. And let's go to the left hand view just so we can get a better view of it. Oops. Shift drag and copy. Alright, there we go. And that's pretty much our air conditioner. Um let's see what we can do for textures. I know you guys wanted textures for that bathroom tutorial, but I never did get around to it. I guess I just lost the urge to work on that. And this is weird. I don't know what this is. Let's just delete it though. I don't think we need it. Oh, there's two of them. Delete that one too. My god, they're everywhere. Let's see, what is that? I don't know what it is, but... We don't want it. So keep deleting these little things in here. Did I get them all? Oh yeah, okay, I got them all on that side. Those are just inside. This side doesn't have one. Alright, so. Um, let's just select everything. And we'll make it a nice, exciting gray color. Oh yes. Very exciting. And actually, no, we want to actually make it black. And then press M for Material Editor. Hopefully it'll come up. And, oh my god, lots and lots of strange materials. Just drag a standard onto it. Apply to selection. And do it to close. Grid. And you can see your basic air conditioner is finished. From afar, it even looks like an air conditioner. And you have pretty much everything. Vents and whatnot. Pretty quick. Didn't take that long. Let's see what I can do about basic texturing in the next part, which I should actually create. But I might skip a few steps if it takes me too long to do, but I will describe them in full detail. So I'll be back in part three.